gift. He shall come to bring us peace. A humble birth will shine on earth when our Savior born takes his first breath. Our Prince of Peace, mighty God, he is here. The light has come. Glory in the highest the heavens sing as the earth rejoices for the joy he brings. Let us praise his holy name. Rejoice together for us he came. A divine scene unraveled that night as Mary and Joseph cuddled this child. This was a baby like no other. Swaddled in clothes, face uncovered, lay our king, the one who came to make us free. He came for the ones that have lost all hope, for his purpose was pure love to give his life for our souls. We are no longer alone. Emmanuel, God is with us. Good evening, church. Let's stand together as we celebrate tonight the birth of our King, the birth of our Savior. And 
we sing joy to the world, for he has come. and joining us this evening. You had a lot of things you could be doing. You came, you chose to celebrate with us and, and we appreciate that. We thank you for that. Tonight, we're gonna take about an hour and we're gonna sing some songs. We're gonna hear from the word a little bit and we're just gonna worship Jesus. And you can stand, you can sit, you can watch, you can sing, whatever is good for you. But let's put all of our focus on him. He is the reason, amen. Let's have a word of prayer as we open up. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your son, and this is why we celebrate. This is why we're here. Your word declares, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Lord, tonight we give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you. Be in this place tonight. Let everything that we do and say bring you glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
is the life of every creature, the breath of all mankind, and you began. Your promises are written in creation. Oh, everywhere I look, I see your plan. Even the rocks cry out, so I'll cry out. Heaven and earth will sing, so I'll sing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, you'll find me singing worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, so when so
Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 23. It says this, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because of what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us.
in this place tonight to do that very thing, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you the glory that is due your name. Jesus, there is no one like you. There is nothing in heaven and earth that compares. And I pray this evening as we worship you, as we look at your word now, God, that you would just open up our eyes, open our ears, let us hear from you and receive everything that you have. And in this place, King Jesus, be glorified. We thank you. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. It is good to see you this evening. Merry Christmas. Glad that you are here. Glad that the weather cooperated. I talked to my parents. They are snowed in. I'm from Buffalo. You don't get snowed in. They're snowed in. Can't leave their house. Uh, So we did okay. It's not too bad here, right? It's a white Christmas, but relax. It doesn't need to be too too snowy. So glad that you're here, that that you're here to worship with us. I know you have other things uh, on your schedule for tonight, but to take some time this evening and focus on Jesus, there's no better way, no better way to get into the Christmas spirit. So we've been talking about the promise of Christmas all month long, and we're going to continue that theme this evening, and then we're going to continue it again tomorrow morning. We've been talking about God's promises and how his promises aren't like human promises. It's not like when a kid promises to do something. Yeah, what's that worth? Uh, maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever. Uh, it's not just an empty promise. When it's a, it's a promise from God, it's a guarantee. When it's a promise from God, it's an absolute certainty, and we can rely on it. And these are the promises that we've been looking at. We've been looking at the promise of hope and the the promise of peace. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the promise of his presence. The promise of his presence. And my main text is the same text that Pastor David just read. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And I'll read it again. And there's three titles for the Lord in this passage And that's really what we're going to focus on. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's the Messiah, he's Jesus, and he's Emmanuel. 
I want to look at those three this morning, starting in verse 18, when, when they call Jesus the Messiah. If you're not in church, you don't use that word, ever. Even when you're in church, you don't use it. What does it mean, Messiah? It means the anointed one. In the New Testament, that word is translated Christ. So Jesus the Messiah, or Jesus Christ. He was the deliverer. He was the one that scripture promised would come. Moses, Isaiah, David, Jeremiah, Daniel, Micah, Hosea, and more Old Testament prophets and writers all foretold that this Messiah would come. Some thousands of years before it happened. Hundreds of years before it happened. And the same message, that God would not leave us. God would not leave us helpless, that he would send us someone to save us, to save us from our sins. Jesus, the Messiah. There's those in Orthodox Judaism still today that are waiting for their Messiah. They missed him the first time around, and they continue to wait for the Messiah to come. There are many others today who, for other reasons, have also missed him. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the deliverer, the savior of the world, as we were just singing. Christmas is the ultimate promise of God fulfilled. It was fulfilled in Jesus. When Jesus comes on the scene, and we scroll down a little bit, and in verse 21, it says, you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The name Jesus. Jesus, it was a common name in Bible times in the Old Testament. It's the same as the name Joshua. But there was nothing common about this Jesus. There was nothing common about Mary's son. And we read in the text that he will save his people from their sin. He'll save us from sin. What is sin? What does that mean for us? The entire world has been cursed by sin. Doesn't matter, male or female, young or old, black or white, rich or poor. It doesn't matter your political leanings. It doesn't matter your philosophies and views. All of this world was condemned as sinners. And this poses a problem for our God. A God who so passionately loves us that he would go to any extent to bridge that gap between where we are and where we need to be so we can spend eternity with him. So God sends his son Jesus a plan that was formulated before the world began, and he sends his son, who was born in a manger. But more than that, he goes on and he lives, and he dies on the cross, and he's resurrected on the third day, and he ascends into heaven. This is the message of the gospel, that Jesus came to us to save us, to save us from our sins, because without him, there's nothing we can do. We're not good enough. We can't give enough. We can't be nice enough. There's nothing we can do to earn God's, God's favor. It's only when we receive by faith who his son is and what Jesus has done for us on that cross, only then can we truly be saved. Jesus, he will save his people from their sins. I, I don't want to nitpick on a, on a single word here, but it's very specific. It says he will save his people. It doesn't say he'll save all people. It doesn't say he'll save everybody. I fully believe that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross was more than enough for everybody. As much as it depends on God, God has done and provided all that he can for mankind. But the scripture tells us specifically, it's his people that will be saved. See, though the offer is extended to all of mankind. It's only those who are truly his that receive it. It's only those who belong to him that accept it. This gospel message has been preached for thousands of years. This gospel message has the power to change your life. It has the power to change not just the here and now, but it has the power to change our eternity. And this message is for everyone but Jesus only saves his people. So the question we're left with is, God, how do, I, how do I become one of your people? Because God, you've done everything necessary for me. What do I need to do so that I can be 
one of your people. He came to save his people from their sins. We scroll down then to verse 23, and we get to this final title of Jesus. And he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. There's a lot of mistakes people make when it comes to the promises of Jesus in Scripture. A lot of misconceptions. Sometimes they're, they're read, sometimes they're taught, some churches teach them. That's okay, we forgive them. It's Christmas, we got to be nice. But there's a lot of misconceptions people have about the promises of God. He never promised us that life would be easy. In fact, he kind of promised us the opposite. Life is difficult. There's going to be some hard seasons. God never promised us perfect health. God never promises us wealth and prosperity. He never promises us that we would always get it. Like you ever just go through something in life, you're like, I just don't understand why this is happening. He never promised us we would always understand, that we would get it. But what he did promise us is this, his presence. Not present with the T, his presence with us. That he would be with us no matter what we faced, no matter what we went through. That in every situation, that it, no matter what we're up against, he promises that he will be there with us. And if Jesus is with us, we can get through anything that we're facing. If the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, if he is with you, you're going to be okay. So I guess the question again becomes, are we with him? Are we with him? Emmanuel. God who is with us, this promise of God's presence. You know what he did promise us? The Bible makes it clear. There's a bunch of verses. He promises that he'll never leave us or forsake us. He'll never abandon us. He'll never leave us feeling empty and lonely. That's his promise in the word. I will never leave you or forsake you. Thankful for a savior that doesn't leave us when things get hard when life gets difficult, when, when we're in turmoil. I'll never leave you or forsake you. His word promises that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now, there's some brothers in the congregation today. That might not be a great example. See, brothers go after each other a little bit. But as, as one who never leaves us, who's always by our side, who always supports us, who always has our back, a friend that sticks closer, Scripture tells us, that the name of the Lord is like a strong tower. We can run to it and be safe. See, there's tons of promises in the word of God. Promises of his presence. Promises that God will be there for you. And I want you to know this morning, no matter who you are, I said this morning, swore I wouldn't do it, but I did it. I want you to know this evening that no matter who you are or what you're facing or what you're going through, this promise is for you. Jesus, no longer a baby in a manger, but the son of God who died and conquered death and rose again, he promised he's not leaving you. He's with you in every situation. You might be here tonight and you might just feel far away from him, but I want you to know he's not far from you. He's never far from us. And his arms are always open wide and he always wants to be closer. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. This, this promise of his presence. And this brings us to the first Christmas. And it's a story that most of us, I would imagine, know very well. Mary and Joseph travel some 90 miles, about a four-day journey, walking and donkeying, maybe, She's nine months pregnant, so he better have given her the donkey or he's in trouble. And they make their way all the way to Bethlehem. And when they get there, the city is just buzzing because of some political activity. They can't find a room to get in. They end up in a stable, in a, in a Jesus is born in a manger because there was no room in the inn, scripture tells us. On that First, well, Christmas, I guess. They sat there, 
confused. Some shepherds show up. What's this about? I don't know who showed up when you gave birth, probably not shepherds. Some shepherds show up, tell them about these angels that they saw. And Mary and Joseph, there, outside, little baby Jesus, and all of the chaos that surrounded that first Christmas scene. And as the night grew on, the shepherds left. The little boy who was playing drums for them apparently was also there. He left. Poor rumpa pum pum. Joseph, he's a guy. He fell asleep first, right? Fair. Joseph's asleep. And Mary's up rocking a fussy baby Jesus. And I think it's fair to say she's probably a little worried, a little concerned. There's a whole lot going on that was not according to her plan. Nine months earlier, this was not the plan. Maybe a little scared, maybe a little anxious, maybe even a little overwhelmed. And on this first Christmas night as she sits there, She just holds on to her baby. She just holds on to Jesus. And that's the message for us tonight. When we're a little confused, when things aren't really going the way we planned, we're a little stressed out, maybe we're we're a little anxious, we just have a lot on our plate, maybe we take a lesson from Mary tonight and we just hold on to Jesus. And we just hold him close. And we find our peace in his very presence. This is where it needs to go for you and I. This is what we need to do. We just need to hold on to him. You're at a point in your life and you're stressed. Things are stressful at home. Maybe it's with the kids or a job or marriage or something. There's something going on and and you feel that turmoil. And the message of Christmas is this. Do what Mary did, just hold on to Jesus. Don't quit, don't give up, don't walk away, just hold him. And here's the irony, it's him, he's holding you. In your darkest moments, he doesn't leave, he's holding you. When you feel far from him, he still won't leave, he's holding you. In every season of life, God, holding us, upholding us by his right hand, promising, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. This is the promise of Emmanuel, God with us, the savior of the world. Not just us holding on to him, he's with us. He's holding on to us. He's upholding us. So don't let go. Press into Jesus. Grow closer to Jesus. I want to share one more verse with you about the promise of his presence. And it's Hebrews 10.23. And it tells us, let us hold on. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. His promises are always true. He is with you. He is holding you. He will not let you go. So I encourage you this morning, this evening, do do the only only reasonable response. Give yourself. Give yourself fully to the Savior. Give yourself to the one who gave himself for you. That's the meaning of Christmas. Jesus, not far off, not a God who's distant, but a God who came to us and showed us how much he loved us by how he lived, by how he died. And he calls us to come to him. I wanna pray this evening. And as I do, I wanna pray for you. And if you're here today and your walk with Jesus is not where it needs to be, or you feel a little further from him than than you should, I want you to know he's not mad at you. (laughs) God is not angry with you. His arms of love are open wide. And in this Christmas season, 
the Savior of the world is calling you to just come close and hold on to him. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you for yet another promise of this season, the promise of your presence, the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. And Lord, I pray this evening as we've looked at your word that you would draw us by your Holy Spirit closer to you. God, I pray for every person in this room tonight, young and old. Lord, we come from different back backgrounds and traditions, but as we've gathered in this place tonight, Father, I pray if there's anyone who is far from you, whose relationship with God is not where it needs to be, that they would find as they, as they cry out and they put their faith in Jesus, God with us, Lord, that you would come in, that you would save your people from our sins, that you would be our Savior. Lord, I pray for those tonight who need a closer walk with you. I pray for those tonight who are feeling far from you. God, I pray for, for those in this place tonight who are feeling the pressures and anxiety of life, that they would hold on to Jesus, that they would hold you close no matter what they're facing, no matter what they're going through. And Lord, let your promises of peace and hope fill our hearts this season as we give ourselves wholly and completely to you. Jesus, thank you for coming to us. Thank you for being our savior. Thank you for saving your people from their sins. And we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. The promise of his presence. This song is the story of his presence in my darkest moments. And may it be a reminder to you that he's there and present in your darkest moments too. Everything was stripped away Empty hours, endless days I felt surrounded by the shadows With no end in sight He was present through the pain. Thank you, Jesus. In my weakness, He was strength. When everything came down to nothing, his kindness that kept me it was his goodness that stayed when I was weary from the burden of the fight his peace made it a Everything was stripped away All his glory and his fame Meeting us among our shadows With the cross His life released the kingdom.
chapter 9, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he will be called the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It doesn't say that he will be called the Counselor, but the Wonderful Counselor. Not God, but mighty God. Not Father, but the everlasting Father. Not peace, but the Prince of Peace. You see, God, our Jesus, who came as a tiny baby, born in a manger, that same Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And that God, in all of his power and in all of his authority, that God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is here with us tonight. sing Silent Night. We 
Thank you for coming out to celebrate the birth of our Lord tonight. Tomorrow morning, we do have a Christmas morning service at 10 o'clock. We hope, hope to see you then. Merry Christmas.